and share, get a little closer for your front row seat to J-World Thursday Night Racing. Hi, I'm Ashley Love from T2P TV, and tonight we have a very special VIP guest. It's Scott Nixon from Quantum. Hi, thanks for having us. I'm Scott from Quantum Sales. Uh, I work with the One Design department worldwide and uh, based here out of Annapolis, and uh, we have a great partnership here with J-World, and uh, we're excited to be a sponsor again this year, and it uh, looks like a great season and only a couple weeks left. Yeah, including tonight, there's only one, two left, so this week and next week, and with the sun going down earlier and earlier, every race is just more and more important, so let's check it out. Awesome. Well, Scott, we're about 40 seconds away from our start. What are you seeing out here? What What do you see as three mistakes that people make on a start? Three mistakes, really. Uh, timing, if you don't have good timing, that's probably the biggest mistake. And to do, to correct your timing, it's, it's nice to do a practice start. Um, other than that, you know, hitting the line at full speed is, uh, is really key. And if you don't do that, that's probably a pretty big problem. And then um, just not having your sails trimmed properly and having the boat at the right angle. There's a little bit maybe outgoing current here. Everyone's struggling to get up to speed and on that line. Yeah, it's a pretty light westerly. The ebb tide should be pretty strong. It's pretty high tide. Um, looks like 60 got a nice start. He was on yes, the line. That is Mike Hobson's Milteni. Slow. Ooh, Turbo Sloth had a little pinch up moment to get over the pin and just barely made it. All right, Scott, and of course, the acceleration off the line has a lot to do with sail trim. How are the, the jib trimmer and main trimmer communicating with each other right now? Yeah, normally the jib trimmer is trimming full speed at all times, unless the helmsman calls half speed or slow. Um, but the real key is just use the sails and the heel of the boat to trim the boat out and not use the rudder. And then it... Uh, six, eight was over, and we'll have to duck down, restart, and five is making out with that quantum buoy. I don't know if they actually hit it. Yes, they did. And then right after a start, what would you say are the very and most important things to do in that first minute after the gun goes off? Well, the priority is to go straight off the line, so holding your lane is really the key, and whatever you can do to make sure you're holding your lane, keeping your heel angle correct, sail trim correct, weight placement, weight trim fore and aft, all that correct, so you can live in that lane and go straight. Right, hopefully you've already set up your, your things like your Cunningham and your Fang. You're not moving around trying to tweak things out and shifting your weight a lot and changing things, just being smooth and straight. Yeah, and you can change that. A lot of times you'll start uh, pretty powered up, and then once you get off the line, you can depower or change settings as needed. But yeah, keeping a, keeping a set off the line is pretty key. Now, we are in the mouth of the Severn, and there are some differences in depth here. What's happening with the current right now? Yeah, the ebb is really strong. So on the right side, you have the channel going up the Severn River, and uh, boats that have gotten on the right are fighting a little bit more than boats on the left. Uh, combination of more pressure on the left and less current. Uh, the left side's looking pretty strong. And then of course that's going to translate downwind. Maybe you'd want to head over there in that direction like a lot of the 80s are doing right now. Yeah, it's funny you say that, yeah. The J80s pretty much, uh, I didn't see any jive sets, but they set and jive inside the first 10 lengths of the uh, run and it uh, makes a lot of sense, right? They're getting a little more ebb, uh, but they may be giving up a little less pressure. So we'll see if anybody splits and makes out over here on the side. Ayacucho is the first one around. Jim Gary with B Riz up on the bow. All nights, come on, guys. Sneaky, sneaky. Whoa, that's not happening, is it? They made it in there, progress. Sneaky it in for fourth around the top mark. Of course, the G24s and G22s are run by the Severn Sailing Association's 
race committee. And Peter Rich in the J24 class has a nice little lead over Pat Fitzgerald's rush hour. And then after rush hour, there's a giant gap to third place. The rest of the J24 fleet filling it in behind. The G22s are a bit closer of a battle, but 677 Brad Julian is quite far ahead. How? What kind of things are you looking for at the top mark to decide what to do downwind? Downwind, it's all about clear air. So uh, whatever jive puts you on the uh, closest angle to the to the leeward gates is important. And then uh, just trying to maintain a clear lane. You can see a lot of guys jive uh, early to get over here in the ebb tide on the left side of the channel. So that's probably gonna work out well for them. Brad Julian still in front, boat name Yard Sale. In second corner of Sanity and Madness, Chris Junge, Todd Baker, and Aaron Muller. Now, Scott, when's the time that you switch from doing full-on tactics like you're sailing by yourself and just covering the fleet? Well, I think depends on uh, what your goal is there. Obviously, the top three boats here have a little pretty nice lead, so they're probably going to be playing safe and just do a loose cover. Um, when you're in the back of the fleet, it's probably a little better to take some risk and try to get out in front of those guys, so that makes it harder to cover, you know, so. Right, you can't pass someone by doing the same thing. Can't do it, and the S sails are really tough, you know, they sail deep angles downwind, so the passing lanes are mostly upwind in these boats. Gotcha. A bit of a pinwheel for the J22s, and one is being completely denied. Oh, 1506 spinning for taking Mark Room without having it. More protests happening in the back. Flags are already out from maybe some other altercation. <laughs> well, I don't remember where, no problem, AJ Libby rounded the bottom mark, but they are definitely the farthest left boat with the most current relief. Yeah, I agree. It looks like a little bit of a right shift, and I think the boats that went far right actually got out of the channel on the other side, on the Navy Point side of the main uh, shipping channel here. So they did get some relief over there, and that with the righty put the, the boats on the right a little bit further ahead. Two J24s are well out in front, but the middle of the pack features the big Chesapeake Bay Yacht Racing Association Spinnaker. They are also one of the video sponsors out here making coverage possible for all of the fleets. This is a very long race for a J World Thursday night race course. What do you think this leg distance is? Probably about a half a mile. They gotta go up, down, up, and back down again. Yeah, lots of room for separation. Uh, Brad Julian and the Schubert family have done a great job here. Great speed, great boat handling, and uh, they're a smart gang, so they've got a massive lead. Could not be caught. 677 wins the J22 race tonight. Scott, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully, there is one more week in the books, or else tonight was the last one. What'd you think? 
It was beautiful. Great night, uh, dying breeze, but uh, a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of racing out here, and everybody looked like they enjoyed it, so it was great. Have you been able to get out for a ride in I have, sailing I this have, year? I have, I have. I've been out, I think, four times. Um, I even got to drive a J70 one week, and I didn't do so well, so I need to get some <laughs> practice too. Maybe I'll get out here more next year. Sounds like a plan. Thank you so much for joining us for T2B TV. I'm Ashley Love.